And now to our Global Ideas series. This time we go to Cambodia, where the last of the Sarus cranes inhabit the lower Mekong Basin. It's an area that's heavily farmed. Our reporter Christian Jaborg took a look at what local farmers are doing differently to improve their own lives and that of the cranes. A pair of Sarus cranes with their young one. The juvenile will stay with its parents for a whole year until the next chick comes. The parents mate for life. It's the dry season in Cambodia. There's been no rain for a long time. But here there are still large wetland areas, the crane's natural habitat. They share the area with dozens of other species. That includes wild ducks, who often take to the air in huge flocks when startled. This is a protected area, one of the last places of refuge for the birds. Chumkea has been a gamekeeper for nearly 10 years. He tries to avoid coming out here when possible so as not to disturb the shy birds. With growing concern, he's seen human activity gradually encroach on the reserve. Adjacent areas are now being farmed, and fertilizers and pesticides are polluting the water. For me, it's more than just a job. I'm helping to protect the cranes. That gives me and my family extra income. But the entire community benefits too, through ecotourism, for example, which is slowly developing here. I want the next generation to be able to enjoy the cranes too. A ticket for the lookout post costs $5, including use of the telescope. We visit a second site in Cambodia that has been turned into a wildlife reserve. Hoor Pok works for a British-based conservation group. He pays regular visits to this small, remote village. These meadows are also ideal terrain for Sarus cranes. So the group has begun an experiment. In many areas, the grass is far too high, so they brought in buffaloes to mow it down. The conservation group gave the local farmers seven buffaloes. They've since given birth to three calves. The farmers have to put up an electric fence to keep the buffaloes in the right area. We let the buffalo graze here because they eat the high grass or trample it down, and that's good for the cranes. They need the short grass as they feed on roots, tubers, insects, and other small prey. So the buffalo help to expand the crane's natural feeding area. And the farmers benefit too. That is essential if villages like this one are to really embrace conservation. There aren't many ways of earning money here, and the people are relatively poor. A few kilometers away, we come to another village, home mainly to rice farmers. Here, too, the farmers have learned to tend their rice fields in a way that limits damage to their surroundings, ensuring that fewer toxins are leaked into the nature reserve. Once again, the farmers have benefited from the process and are saving money. It makes a huge difference. The harvest is just as good, but we've learned to use less fertilizer and fewer pesticides. We also use less seed. Before we needed 300 kilos of seed per hectare, now we use half that. And we also produce seed ourselves and no longer have to buy it. The trainer promises, in the end, you'll be millionaires, a suggestion that prompts plenty of laughter. People across the region are receiving training from local NGOs, many of them supported by the German government's International Climate Initiative. The effects of climate change are very evident here. The rainy season is starting later. 
then sometimes days' worth of rain falls in just a few hours. Initially, the farmers responded by using more pesticides and fertilizers to protect their crops. But now they've learned that not every pest has to be treated with chemicals, a practice that is otherwise standard in many rice paddies in Cambodia. Last year, there were lots of pests and diseases in the rice field because it wasn't as wet. Normally, when it floods, lots of nutrients are washed into the fields. Now, the focus is on more natural, low-impact forms of farming. Conservation is also becoming an important subject in schools. These children are learning about the Saurus crane. Most of them come from farming families. Many don't realize that the Saurus crane is an endangered species and that their parents' work can threaten its existence further. It's all done in a fun way, with a quiz and a drawing competition. The children learn how this huge bird sleeps standing up, how there used to be many more of them than there are now, and other fascinating facts. The Saris crane is bigger than any other crane in the world. The children quickly begin to warm to this majestic bird that shies away from human contact. The children go back home and pass on what they've learned to their families. They all live next to the wildlife reserve, so they learn that conservation is important for their future. Worldwide, around half of all natural wetlands have already disappeared. Only those who recognize the value of this unique habitat will be prepared to invest time and effort in protecting it. And only then will saurus cranes continue to have a future here in the lower Mekong wetlands of Cambodia. <laughs>